Hello, everybody. I am so excited in this video because I am going to be walking you through my weekly reset, my weekly review process. This is something I do every single week to check in with myself and get a little bit of real time information about the things that are working, the things that aren't working. And I've added in a few new things that I'm testing out right now. And so far, absolutely loving from the perspective of tracking my stress, tracking my health stats, as well as a few other things. So I'm really, really excited to dive into some of this stuff with you today. Now, for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Ellen. I am a burnout and stress management coach. And for those of you who are not, you are returning. Welcome back. This is going to be a different aspect of my Notion template that I've never taken you through before. You've seen a little bit of my review process with the monthly review, but this is something that we haven't dove into next. I think this is the meat of the review process. I think the more frequently you can check in with yourself, the better. And this is literally something I do every single week. If it is something that you are considering doing for yourself, maybe you want to follow along with me, get some ideas from some of my templates, then one thing I will say is I highly recommend turning this part of your week into a sort of ritual. I highly recommend really kind of turning it into something that you can relish, that you can savor. I'm doing it at like 8.30 in the morning right now. So I have a nice cup of coffee. It's December as I'm doing this. So I've got some peppermint mocha creamer in here. Um, but if I'm doing it in the evening, sometimes I will, you know, pour myself a glass of wine or really just kind of turn it into a little bit of a ritual, light a candle, something like that. I think it makes it a much more attractive thing to do when you really, really turn it into something that you can savor and you can kind of spoil yourself while you do it. The one final thing I will say too is if you have bought my Notion digital planner already, some of the templates inside of this are new and have recently been added inside of the Notion digital planner. Um, if you're in the support group, you can go in there to get some of those updates and learn how to build some of these templates for yourself or snag the template from the Notion support group. If you are not, I would recommend either going to my template shop and buying the template so that you can duplicate them yourself, or maybe reach out to me and see if you can join the Notion Digital Planner support group. But other than that, if you are liking what you see as you go through this video, please do not hesitate to like and to subscribe. But with that, let's go ahead and let's get into our weekly review here. So I've actually already done this weekly review, but to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what it looks like from scratch, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this window so I can kind of cheat off of it, if you will, but I'm going to go ahead and start from a completely new week. So anytime I have a new weekly review that I'm doing, I go into my weekly review planner. So usually I start on my dashboard here. I go over here where it says reviews and reflections, click on the weekly reviews, and then I add a new review. Then I'll just click on this weekly review template here and it populates absolutely everything I'm trying to check and keep track of inside of my weekly review. I'm also going to go ahead and change this guy to Serif because I prefer the look of Serif. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and change this to whatever the week was. 17, 22. And then I like to add a cover. As you can see, if we go back to this view, there's a cover associated with every one of these. I like the look of a gallery view. And I like to make my cover something that kind of captures or commemorates the week. So like the week that we made, you can look back here, the week we made Christmas cookies, I added that. Thanksgiving, I added that. When it kind of started to turn into the holiday season, I added that. So I've got a couple of kind of different pictures kind of commemorating the different weeks. For this week in particular, you probably already see on my last one, I had a wine glass because on Friday night, my aunt came back from Africa. We looked at pictures and we drank wine while we looked at pictures from Africa. I actually might change the one I already did to this picture because this is actually what a lot of the wineries in South Africa when I went there looked like. So um, that's exactly what we want here. The next thing we want to do is we want to go in and we want to add the month that this is associated with. So this is December 2022. That's because this is then going to populate inside of my monthly review tracker. So if I were to click over here to the monthly review, you can see all of the December related reviews are already in here. That just makes my monthly review a little bit easier when I have quick access to these. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick which week's health stats go with. Um, this current week. And that is going to help out for my health stats that are going to be lower in the template. These are some of the new aspects of the template that I've integrated. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to go ahead and do in our template is we're going to check in on our habits and checking on our habit tracker. What I used to do is I used to click over into the habit tracker and I would have to kind of toggle back and forth between my main habit tracker view and my weekly review. What I decided to do recently was I decided, okay, I'm just going to copy the weekly review down into here so that I can just focus and look at the weekdays and the months without having to toggle back and forth. I am also going to filter this by name and then by December so that I only focus on the December stats. I don't really care about the other ones right now. So I'm just kind of looking through this and looking to see if I can see any patterns. And really some of the biggest patterns that I see, and as I go through this, I'm going to kind of add things to my main review down here, which is my what worked, what didn't work, and what can I improve. Um, so I can kind of see down here that I drank way more water this week. This 33.3% is really from this past week because I have really sucked at drinking water. The reason why it's been so much better is because I've been adding Neo to my water bottle. Um, and it's just like a little bit of flavoring in there and it's just made it so much easier for me to drink water. So that is something that worked with this week. I'm kind of cheating a little bit because like I mentioned, I've already done my review. So I'm like copying some things over from the previous review that I did just to save us some time as we go through this. So that's one of the big observations that I make as I go through this. I have continued to crush it with my meditation and my reading. And that is because I do that first thing in the morning, literally before I even make coffee, right when I wake up, I meditate and I read. And that has been working really, really well to just continue to do that right in the morning. The one thing that I will say is that I have really been struggling with one aspect of my meditation. I only remembered this, and this is actually something I do a little bit later, to check in on my monthly reviews. In my monthly review, I remember that I said one of my goals was to um, make sure, I mean, I already wanted to make sure that I'm not doing Uber Eats this month and I'm using meal services, which I'm doing, but I also want to make sure that I start meditating once in the evening or later in the day, and I wanted to meditate at least four times a week on my meditation cushion. I have really been struggling with that recently. So some of the things I want to put in my what can I improve is I want to put in some of the changes I want to make to my meditation. I want to move where I charge my phone. I think that'll help get me out of bed and actually onto my meditation cushion when I meditate. And I want to set an alarm on my phone for my PM meditation. So those are two things I'm going to do today. And actually what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add those into my quick capture. Um, so decide another location for charging my phone. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assign that to today since I've got quite a bit of time today. And then I'm going to decide on a time for PM meditation and set an alarm in my phone. Okay. So we're also going to schedule that for today. If I'm so inclined, I could put both of these as spirituality tasks for my spirituality task area, because technically that is my spirituality part of my life. Okay. So I've got those, I captured those tasks that I want to do. Um, I'm kind of doing some things in my review that I would usually do later, just kind of as I think of them, just because I'm so familiar with my process. So like the check-in on monthly reviews, I just did that. Adding tasks over to my quick capture, which is this guy. I'm kind of doing that as we're talking about it. So I'm kind of doing some things a little bit out of order here, but they're all written down in my review process, just in case I do forget them. So let's see, are there any other things that I think I improved at this week? I actually think I got a lot better at journaling. My journaling percentage went up a lot from the last time I did this check-in. And that has been something that I've been making just much more time for in my morning routine. I'm going to post a video soon that kind of details my morning routine and process inside of Notion. I don't check into Notion until after I've done my meditation, my reading, but I do journal inside of Notion. And that has been working really, really well. I've been so much more consistent with my journaling once I've switched inside of Notion. So that's definitely something that's working as well. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that guy into what's working this week. I think that's probably all I can take from my habit tracker. One other thing actually that I think I'm going to add here is it's really been working to kind of decide in the morning what habits I am and am not going to engage in. Like if we were to go to my habit tracker right now and look at today, it's 
eight 40 in the morning. I've already checked off read and meditate because I've done those things, but I also have checked off no takeout, no ethanol. Oh, and I've already journaled no takeout and no alcohol. And it's 8 40 in the morning. Like I could still do that later in the day, but actually I've been finding that when I make the decision and set the intention of, I'm not going to do this, or I am going to do this later in the day, it usually happens. And that's something that I do think has been working quite well is deciding in the morning what habits I am and am not going to partake in has been a really, really good thing for me as I've been doing my morning check-ins and my habit check-ins. So that's probably another thing that's been really, really good. Let's see, is there anything else? All right. So that's the first part is checking in on my habits. The next part is checking in on my time tracking and just kind of seeing what some of the data is showing. And really there's a lot lower this week because I haven't had as much going on in my day job, but admin stuff is still taking so much time. And I haven't been good at like hashtagging and indicating how I'm spending that admin time. So I know it's been taking a lot of time, but I'm not 100% sure what the time sucks are in my admin stuff. So I think one of the things, this is one of the things that I want to start doing is trying to figure out what those admin tasks are. And so I can start to figure out if I need to kind of outsource them. So I'm going to go ahead and close that guy. So one of the things I'm noticing is going wrong is that admin tasks are still taking up a ton of time in my calendar. And so I want to, one of the things I want to start improving next week is I want to start hashtagging activities so I can figure out what is and is not taking up so much time. Like, is there a specific project in work that is taking up a ton of time? So on and so forth. So that's definitely something I'm interested in doing more of. So that is the next piece is checking in on my time tracking. And then the last piece over here is checking in on my health stats. This is brand new. I have never done this before, but after having a, I had a call in my Notion support group with one of my members earlier this week, and she really wanted to start doing some health stats and health tracking for her. And it gave me so many ideas for myself. And so I built this for myself just this past week. And I'm already loving, I'm a former scientist. I love data. If you're like that, go ahead and drop a comment below. I love me some data. Um, And I've really, really appreciated being able to kind of see these numbers out on the screen. I found it to be very, very, very helpful. And what it does is it is linked up. This week's health stats is linked up to this week's weekly review. So if I go in here, to my like sleep trackers or to my workout trackers, they're all linked up to this particular week here. So let's go ahead and collapse this and we can just look at the overview right now. So what this is showing is showing various things. It's showing how much I worked out last week. It's showing, did I get any physical rest? Did I get any mental rest? Um, this, all of these are different types of rest and different types of self-care that we talk about in my membership. So if this is something you're interested in learning more about, check out the link in the description below to my memberships. I also have a link in the description below to my notion digital planner, which by the time this video is posted, all of these new trackers and whatnot will be integrated into that. Um, but we've got, did I get physical rest? Did I get mental rest? Did I engage in emotional self-care and emotional rest, which to me is like journaling. Did I engage in creative rest? Um, and that's kind of me spending time in nature or spending time doing things that are creative and flexing my creative muscles. Um, did I get social rest? Did I get sensory rest? Sensory rest is all about spending time in quiet or in darkness. I sucked at that one last week. That is definitely an observation I'm making. Um, meditation and spiritual rest, rest was great. Did I get social time in last week? How frequently? How frequently was I stressed? So these are linking up to tons of different trackers inside of my health dashboard. So in my health dashboard, I have my overview, but I also have a sleep tracker. I have a workout and rest tracker. I have an emotion and mood tracker. And I also have a stress and burnout tracker. So all of these things are linking up to my overarching health stats tracker. And that's kind of where all of these summaries are coming from. So how many days was I stressed? How many days did I go to bed by 10 p.m.? How many days did I not have coffee after 2 p.m.? How many days did I have magnesium before I went to bed? How many days did I get sun? What was my average time in bed? And what was my average time asleep? So all of these things are pulling from various different tables in my notion to give me a nice summary. And basically what I see when I'm looking through this is 
that I am not getting certain types of rest that may be important for me. Also, clearly, I don't care about typos. <laughs> um, I don't know why, too, but sometimes I have to do the actual auto correction like multiple times. It's a little irritating. The ones that I'm really, really missing are the creative rest. I don't feel like I'm getting enough of um, a particularly low time outside. I'm very grateful that when I look out the window, it actually looks like it's going to be decently nice today. I might be able to go for a walk. I live in the Seattle area, so that is what we happen. Um, but probably the biggest one is the sensory rest because I really didn't get hardly any sensory rest this week. Um, and then probably the last bit is it wasn't a great week in terms of stress management. If we go over to my stress management tracker, I actually should probably add something into my weekly review where I just have like a quick access to the various different trackers, the workout and rest tracker, the stress and burnout tracker, the emotion and mood tracker, um, and what's the other one? Oh, and the sleep tracker. So it's probably going to be helpful for me to have quick access to these. So I'll probably copy this into my template after I'm done making this video. But if I were to go over to the stress and burnout tracker, I had a number of days this week where my stress monitor, which I have on my Apple watch, check out that video. If you want to learn more about it, signaled that I was overloaded or that I needed to pay attention. That happened a lot this week. So this was not a great week in terms of stress management. I have a lot of things happen personally and whatnot that were very triggering this week. So that's something for me to make note of. And perhaps another reason why I might need some more of these different types of rest, because those help me with stress management. So the last thing I take from this is I really want to make sure I block out some time on my calendar for sensory mental rest and creative rest, because those I think are going to be really important for me moving forward. And I'm not getting enough of them right now. One of the next things I do in my weekly review is I do my memories and it's just me making note of some of the things that I want to remember from this week. So some of the things that came up when I did this before are I got to see my aunt because she just got back from Africa and I got a new debit card that has my alma mater's logo on it, which makes me very happy. I'm a Coug. I went to Washington state, go Cougs. Um, I had some lovely moments with my grandma this week and I had an amazing prospect call on Friday morning that I'm very, very excited about potentially working with this person. Um, from there, and I've again, I've already done these things, so I'm going to check off a lot of them. I check in on my bank accounts and I update my business and my personal finance trackers. I actually recently just redid my finance trackers. Again, I'm going to be posting an update video inside of the Notion support group for how to build this finance tracker. And I'm going to also be constructing it into a template. So those have both been done. I got my email to inbox zero. I cleared my desktop and my downloads folder. So I've done all of these things. These are just little cleaning and check-in resets. And then I also update my main dashboard goals and intentions. And what this looks like, I'll just go over and show you. As I go in and I update whatever the things I said I wanted to improve on, I add those to my goals of the week. I make any changes to my goals of the month that might've come up. And then I just do a little check-in of how I'm feeling, what's going to make this week awesome, and what am I working on that would move me closer to my goals. I just kind of update these few things after I do my weekly review. So in a nutshell, that is my weekly review and my weekly reset. Sometimes, especially with some of the new things I added, it takes a little bit longer, um, but usually it's only about 30 minutes to do the entire thing when I'm not like narrating it and walking through it with people. Usually it only takes me about 30 minutes to do. Probably the part that takes the longest is updating my finances, especially depending on how many transactions happened that week, because I update my finances for my business and for my personal accounts. Um, and that's probably the thing that takes the most time, but I highly recommend getting into this sort of a routine for yourself. Again, I find it just really helps you capture that real time data of what's working and what's not working in your life so that you can make some shifts and some changes. If you are interested in learning more about those different types of rest and self-care and kind of why I'm tracking those, or even a little bit more about some things that you can do for stress management that you might be able to build into your weekly review and reset head to the link in the description to check out my memberships. The price is gonna almost double in the new year for the membership. So this is the time to get in on it. And if you do get in on it, you get access to my Notion Digital Planner and my Notion Support Group included in that membership. So definitely check that out. I'll not only be able to help you with your productivity, your Notion, but also with any stress management and burnout management you might need. But with that, 
Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, once again, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.